Hey there! Today we're going to be talking about website design creation questionnaires. If you are a web designer or work for an agency or you're a freelancer, this video is going to help you have a smoother onboarding process for your web design clients, helping you to build their sites quicker and have better customer satisfaction. Uh, we're going to be talking about different aspects of having a website design creation questionnaire. First, why should you have one? And there are a bunch of different reasons. And then we're going to talk about the specific questions that you should be asking. And we're also going to be talking a little bit about some different tools you can use in your client onboarding process to make the process more seamless and streamline and make your client happier and make your life a lot easier. So stay tuned, we have a lot of information to cover, and today it's all about website design creation questionnaires for web designers. So before we dive in, first I wanna share some bonus content accompanying this video with you. So first we've got a rather in-depth blog post about everything that you need to know about web design creation questionnaires from the reasons to have one in your process to the specific questions you should be asking. We also have a downloadable PDF guide with all the questions to ask so you can take that with you and build that into your onboarding system for your new web design clients. And we've got the links in the show description in the show notes, uh, as well as in this video as well. So check those out after you check out the rest of this video. So first, let's talk about the reasons that you should have a website design creation questionnaire in your new client intake process. First reason is that it can save you a ton of time. Um, client projects can involve a lot of back and forth. You know, you can ask the client for assets and information and feedback on things. They send you back some, but not all of the information that you need. Then you follow up asking for the rest of the information. Then they send you back more, but not all of the information that you need. And this repeats over and over again. And then you can see you end up having emails with threads and dozens of emails of a little bit of content and a little bit of feedback, but not everything. And every one of these emails that you have to read and respond to and save content from just eats into your overall project time and it ends up making your project take a lot more time from your part than it otherwise would, as opposed to if you had all the information at once, you could take all that information, throw it onto the site and be done a lot sooner. And it saves a lot of time, not just from your end, but also from the client's end. If they know exactly what they need to provide you, they can provide that and then be done and then they can see their mock-up or their website done quicker. And so this can hurry along your design process and streamline things. And this can save you time and money. The next reason that you need a website design creation questionnaire, well, there are things that you're going to need to get the site designed that the client has that you don't have. And having a questionnaire with all the questions in one place that the client can answer and submit to you makes everything go along easier and gets you what you need to get started on the website. So picture this, you have a web-based form that the client can fill out, adding their name and info as they like it to appear on the website. Maybe they can upload and attach certain assets like images or logos. And then once they submit that, that information goes into your design project sequence. You may have an automation set up so that that form submission goes into your project management software, whether it's Trello, Asana, Basecamp, whatever, and your design team can get going on the project right away. Another bonus of the website design creation questionnaire is that it keeps you organized. Getting all the information that you need from the client coming from one place helps you keep everything organized and helps you better manage the project. So instead of having 50 emails from the client with some information in one email and some in another, and you having to go through the emails and parse out what exactly we got, uh, the questionnaire ends up being the end all be all. So you can point the client to the website creation questionnaire and say, you know, it's important to you please make sure to include this information in the questionnaire because this is the basis for our website design. Beyond that, one thing I like is that the questionnaire can guide the client. Uh, and if you customize the questionnaire the right way, you can help the client realize what design direction they want and get everybody on the same page. 
So for example, some clients may be wanting a website because they have customers that will look them up online and those customers need to find a phone number or address for the business or the client that you have may be wanting to get new business from clients that have never heard of them before. And so they really want a very call to action heavy, uh, SEO ready, friendly website. And so these can be two different design directions entirely. You know, one that might be a more polished, sexy website, one that might be more conversion optimized. And so based on what the client wants as their goal, we wanna help them realize what kind of site they need. So you can lay out a series of questions in the questionnaire to align the client's goal with the website design direction. So for example, you can ask an initial question like, what is the main goal for your website? A, to get new customers. B, to be an online reference for existing customers who have found me and are looking me up online. Or C, a little bit of A and B. And that can really help inform your design direction ultimately. One other fun thing that you can have with this is you can set up conditional logic. Conditional logic is a great tool to have in your arsenal for your questionnaires. And if you're not familiar, conditional logic basically lets you pose certain questions if people respond in a certain way to previous questions. So I can have a question, for example, if someone says, I want my website to be uh, geared towards getting me new clients, then I can pose them a question saying, which of these websites do you like that is geared towards getting you more clients? Please give me feedback on these. And so you can really have trees that go out with different branches based on the responses that you're getting to previous questions, and that'll help you better flesh out and understand what it is your clients are looking for and help you get more targeted, relevant responses to the questions and information that you're going to need from them. Ultimately, this all helps you effectively use your knowledge and guide the conversation in the questionnaire to help the client and you get on the same page and help the client get a great looking website that is aligned with their goals. And the last reason that I think you really need to have a website design creation questionnaire is that having the questionnaire helps your client and you stay on track with the initial vision of the site. You know, Sometimes you can get feedback from a client and you design the site with that feedback in mind and you try to meet their spec perfectly. And then once the client sees their vision laid out, they realize, oh, uh, I don't like that. That's not really what I'm looking for. And then they possibly change their minds completely, even though you have built the site to their specifications. Having the website creation questionnaire, you have a receipt of sorts that you can refer back to and you and the client can both look back to that when reviewing the website and the mock-up after you provide it to them. This is a nice insurance policy to have in case the client, after all the feedback they gave you, they're not happy with their vision, you know? Um, they can, this way they can't claim, well, this isn't what I wanted, I wanted this. And you can say, well, you asked for this specifically with this color scheme and we created this exactly for you, so I don't know what to tell you, you know? Um, and you can, you know, work from there. Getting feedback from the client before you provide them any mock-ups or designs, it commits everyone to the same vision, you know, both you and the client, and it helps everyone stay on track. And that's ultimately for the best and can help you and the client have a great working relationship. Now, let's talk about the questions that you should have in your new client questionnaire. Uh, first, let's talk about the initial questions. The first questions that I like to ask are the basic info that you need on the site. You know, this covers how your client wants their business name spelled on their site, their addresses, their contact information, all that stuff. So here are the questions that I'm asking in every questionnaire that I have. First, I want to know what is your full business name? You know, is there an ink at the end, limited, something else? And do we need to put that name in full on the footer of the website? Do you have a preferred shorthand name or abbreviation of that name uh, that you want us to use 
mostly throughout the website. What is your main business address? And if you have additional locations, do you? Uh, list them also so we can include them if you want me to. Um, also, if you have many locations, a spreadsheet or other document with all your location data, that'd be great. What's your primary phone number? Who is the primary contact person going to be, both for the website design project with their name, email, and phone, as well as the primary contact for the live website? And these may be different things. So you may have one person who's gonna be the webmaster for the live site, who is going to need access to analytics and contact form submissions. You know, what's their name, email, and phone? but also who is heading up on the client's end, who's going to be your primary contact person for getting you all the assets and getting you approval on launching the site. And these can be different, um, especially for larger organizations. So make sure you get that information written out and you know who it is that is gonna be the contact person on the client's end, very important. Next, let's talk about business assets. You know, for most websites, you're going to need the client to provide you with some assets, things like headshots or text copy. You know, these questions help you suss out what materials the client has and ask the client to provide them. And it'll save you back and forth from, that can often happen uh, when web designers try and get things like pictures and logos and texts from the client. So ask, do you have an existing website? If so, you know, what do you like and what do you dislike about the website? This will help you in better designing the new website and making sure the client's happy with it. Because sometimes the client can have little nitpicky things that they hate about the site that they have. And if you don't ask this question, you can accidentally end up designing a site that they hate because, you know, for example, you have a very large phone number or contact form and they hate that, but you wouldn't know it uh, unless you ask that question. And if you went off their old site as a point of reference for creating the new site without asking them what they like or hate about their old site, then you can end up making some the same mistakes and starting off on a bad foot and the client doesn't like the site that they get from you. Do you have a logo? If so, please upload it here. Do you have a color scheme? If so, can you share that with us or share the hex codes uh, for that? Anything that can help us use that color scheme throughout your site? Does your business have a tagline? Do you have a mission statement or value proposition? Do you have, you know, something that can help us sell your business uh, on the website? Do you have any additional staff members that you'd like to include or mention on the website? And if so, please attach a document with their names and any information you'd like to include for them, whether it's phone, email, anything like that. And for any headshots, please attach them all separately as individual JPEG or PNG files so we can upload to the site. We definitely don't want you to create one Word doc where you paste in the photo files and we have to then extract the photos from that Word doc. It looks terrible and it never turns out good. So please make sure that any photos you send are sent separately as JPEGs or PNGs. Um, that would be great. Next, I wanna ask design specific questions. This is all about setting expectations and parameters for the site design project. You know, what kind of website is the client looking for? You know, do they want more business? Do they want a pretty looking site? Do they have examples of sites they like? You know, the more information the client shares here, the more direction you have to go on and the less the client is likely to say, I don't like this, this is not what I wanted. Putting you in an, an awkward position later where you're like, well, I designed this website according to the information you gave me. And they're saying, well, that's not what I wanted. But if you have more information from them, you can get a better sense of what they're looking for and you can design to that spec. So what should you ask? What's the main goal of your website? Do you want more traffic and business? Do you wanna help people who are already know your business to find you online? Which of these design examples that I have here appeal to you most? And then show examples of your portfolio, other sites uh, to give the client a sense of what their site could look like. Are there any examples of competitor websites that you like? And 
If so, why? And so please show examples of the, their URLs and also explanations of your thoughts and why you like or don't like certain competitor websites. That helps too. Which of these design elements do you want to include on your website? And you can list things like portfolio, client portal, meeting scheduler, payment portal, things like that. Um, and if any of these for your business are going to cost extra, like if the client needs to pay you more for using a client portal plugin or something like that, uh, you may need to mention that as well. Next, I have certain catch-all questions. Uh, is there anything you wish to provide us that you have not provided yet? You know, if yes, please attach. Um, and is there any additional feedback you would like to give or anything else you would like to mention? This is just a nice catch-all to have to ensure that if a client, for whatever reason, didn't attach or include something that they should have, that here's the place where they can do that and you can get anything else, any other stragglers, any other information that you might need to design their website. Then we've got some other big picture questions. Uh, if your customers are other businesses that are selling to their customers, then you need to know a bit more about who their target customers are and who they're trying to reach. And this needs to be understood before you can build a website that caters to and is directed at that target audience. So I ask things like, how did your company get started? You know, could you describe the personality of your business in a few words? How do you want to be perceived in the marketplace by clients and prospects? Who is your target audience? Generally speaking, what kind of language or vibe do you feel best represents the voice that you want to convey? Is it casual, formal, authoritative, friendly, humorous, serious, something else? Describe for us your ideal client or prospect and who would you not find to be an ideal client or prospect? What are your ideal client's biggest pain points and why are they coming to you? Why do your customers choose you over other competitors? Who are your top competitors and what do they do well or not do well? And what sets you apart in the marketplace? What are key takeaways you want the client or your customers to have? Do you offer any bonuses or 30-day guarantees, any sort of guarantees at all? Um, what's the price point for your products? Do you offer payment plans? And what questions do customers ask you or your team regularly? So that's just an example of some different client-oriented questions to help you get a better sense of who the target audience is for your customer's website. And that just about covers it for your website creation questionnaire when onboarding new clients. Recapping real quick, earlier in the video we talked about the reasons for having a website creation questionnaire. From saving time, to streamlining your processes, to getting you and your client on the same page, and getting you the assets that you need to build the client's website. We also talked about the specific questions to ask, from the initial questions getting you info on the company, to more intricate questions helping you get design direction from the client. Next up, I recommend you download our free website creation questionnaire checklist. It's free and it includes all the questions that we talked about today and more. So download it, copy all the questions, and then you can throw them into your preferred form software of choice and get the ball rolling a lot faster on providing a website creation questionnaire to your clients. We don't want you to have to spend time recreating all the questions that we talked about today. So this will help you get going a lot faster. So please check that out and download that. It's in our show notes as well as in the link below on this video. Lastly, if you haven't yet, please like this video and subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos geared towards helping you run a more successful and profitable website design business.